drill bits. Not any old drill bits, no. A multifaceted drill bits, just like these. But also, what is the difference between a multifaceted drill bit and a twist drill bit, just like this dormer? Eh, I wonder. Well, I'm going to explain to you the different facets of the multifaceted drill bit. And the lack of facets, aren't they? Well, twist drill, just like this one here. Yes, we're going to be going to the microscope and looking close up at these drill bits. Because you can't see a lot like that. No. And the previous video that I made, a 60 second short, it was quite evident there's only so much you can say in 60 seconds. And show it in 60 seconds. So I'm going to show you, under the microscope, the facets of the multifaceted drill bit. But before we do, what do I mean by multifaceted drill bit? I mean this. Yes. We have different cutting faces of a drill bit. As if you're looking at the drill bit from the top. A four facet grind, which is a bit more of a standard uh, ground drill bit, has a secondary facet and a primary facet. The primary facet is the cutting facet. The secondary facet is the clearance facet. But with a multifaceted uh, drill bit here on the right, you also can have a secondary point angle. It was a bit rarer, but also a tertiary facet. Also, you'll have your primary facet, which is your cutting edge, and then you have your secondary facet as well. It makes sharpening a little bit more complicated, but don't fret. It don't really matter. No, and I'll explain why. So what we're going to do is we're going to be going over to the uh, microscope. Oh, here it is. That's the microscope. And here are the actual drill bits. And these are cobalt drill bits because I wrote it on there. Yeah. Anyway, and these are twist drills. And these particular ones are by Dormer. They are good drill bits too. So let's go over to the actual microscope and have a look close up at the end of this drill bit. So, uh, oh, what button to press that one, I think. Oh, there it is. Yes, there's the end of the cobalt multifaceted drill bit. Now, on the face of it, it doesn't really necessarily look too much like that, does it? The uh, multifaceted drill bit. No, but it is. Apart from it doesn't have the SPA. Now, with this particular drill bit, I've got my pointy device here. So let's uh, show you my pointy device. Okay, there's one pointy device. Now we have the cutting uh, facet here, which is the primary facet. That's the bit that does the work. But you can probably see there's a bit of a difference in shading there. Well, that's what's happening there is the actual grind is tapering away. Away, away from the actual cutting edge. And it's there for clearance. But also, on these drill bits, if I remove it out of its little holder, so I can show you, we have a tertiary facet as well just there now they're getting more and more common now on uh drill bits designed for you know for drilling into steel and what have you but also in the helical of the actual drill bit itself in the twist these faces here are also cutting edges and they help keep the hole clean on the end here sharpening can be a little bit of a pain you can see a bit more clearer there where the actual primary facet is which is the sharpened edge and then the secondary facet which is basically slopes away now the angle across the top of this drill bit will be around so the angle across here hold this by hand you know it's about 118 degrees uh, and then the two other facets the um, secondary facet and the tertiary facet uh, well they're just about 12 degrees generally the idea of that is so it doesn't create any friction when it's cutting. We don't want the, um, the secondary facet, which is the clearance facet, making contact with your workpiece after it's made the you know made the cut for the actual hole. So it'll create too much friction. What way am I going that way? That way. Now on a ordinary drill, but such as this twist drill here, so it can be a little bit shake, this shaky. Now that's better. I'm resting on the table. Now makes sense, doesn't it? Now. As you can see here, there isn't any real defined cutting face, is there? It looks like it's ground all the way, this all the way around the same. From the cutting face 
to the clearance face. That's because it is. Now, when I sharpen my drill bits, and this one's been sharpened by me, looking at it fairly recently, I would start at the cutting face, and then I would twist the drill against the actual bench grinder, for which I showed in a previous video, and grind back the clearance facet, which is the secondary facet. And then that will make contact with the workpiece after you've actually made a cut with the actual primary facet. Now, if we look at the side of this drill, but you can probably see a little bit clearer, bring a bit closer to the camera, how far it falls away. It should be around 12 degrees. I might go a little bit more on that one, but if, you know, I sharpened this by hand. So there's no guides or drill guides or anything like that used. I don't use drill guides generally. I just grab the tool and just uh, touch it up on the side of the bench grinder, then carry on working. It's quick. You know, it takes no time at all. Now, this is a dormer. I can probably show you. Yeah, there you go. This is a dormer uh, drill bit. It's quite old, um, but good tools last, you know. And dormer drill bits are good drill bits. Dormer and Presto, what have it. They're good quality drill bits. Now, these ones, I don't know the make of these. These are, I've got these on C discount. They're apparently cobalt uh, steel. I have to admit, they're quite nicely ground. Let's get, get some focus. I'm going to stay my finger. I keep cutting myself. My fingers are all matted up. Look, look, cuts all in my fingers. Look, terrible. Yeah, that's a typical woodworker. So these are high-speed steel, basically, in cobalt. Just like a piece of plating, I reckon. But it's um, they they're good. They're good. Still good draw bits. They are good draw bits, and they're not. And they're nicely ground on the end as well. It's got nice, nice machining. Better than what you can do by hand. But at some point, you're going to want to sharpen them yourself. Now you can get a, a load of different gadgets and stuff to, you know, sharpen your drill bits. Now I don't necessarily think that's a brilliant idea. I think it's a good idea to sharpen your drill bits, but I don't necessarily think you need all these toys to sharpen drill bits. No. Um, there are a few on offer. Let me just show you some. You've got, you might have heard of a Tormek. The Tormex, it's a great sharpening device. I'm not that keen on them in, in many ways because anything sharpening in on the round, on the radius, creates a hollow. And I don't like hollow ground. It, it's, no, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. It alters the angle of your grind, for start. Now, this tool here, which is the Tormek with the drill sharpening guide attached. Look at that monstrosity! Are they having a laugh? Really? Look at the size of that flipping thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> Luckily with the Tormek, um, it's water cooled, so it'll keep the bit, you know, um, cool. So that's what you got to remember, is obviously every time you're sharpening, you've got, you've got to keep, if you're using a bench grinder, you need to keep dunking the drill bit in a little bit of water to keep it cool. Don't allow it to go blue, you know, too hot. You would need to keep the bit cool. But that's not the only option. You've got other options out there as well. There is um, other guides that you can get. You can use your bench grinder. But with this one here, there's no water cooling, which means you've got to take the drill bit out of this monstrosity <laughs> to, to dunk it in the water every time. And then it doesn't look that simple, does it? It looks like you've got some kind of screw arrangement to uh, uh, take the drill out of the back there where you've got to slide it down that little shaft bit and then you've got to put it back again. Every time you want to cool it down. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Don't bother with anything like that. That's the stuff. You don't need to. What you need is practice. And do it by hand. And follow the actual facets on the drill. You could make some guides. But make what you could make a guide. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, in another video, I will make a drill guide. And I'll show you how, how you can do it quite easily. Because you don't need all this faff. Drill guides is actually a really simple thing to make. It really, really is. There's other options out there. You've got, well, that's obviously the tall mech again, but then you've got this thing here, the Drill Doctor. Now, the Drill Doctor is more of a domestic version of an industrial drill sharpener. Now, the plastic thing on the left, as you can see, leaning up against it, is basically, it's like a chuck, and you place your drill bit in that chuck, you chuck it into the hole, and you twist it around, and it will sharpen your drill bits. They do work. They do work. But still... 
um, I'm pretty certain they don't do multifaceted drill bits. So you'll be drilling in the same fashion as you so drill, you'll be sharpening in the same fashion as you would do if you were using a bench grinder. Don't forget a bench grinder you can use for a multitude of other sins as well. You know that? And they ain't expensive. You can buy bench grinders for like 30 quid. This thing, oh, I don't know what the 500X is, but they're like two or three hundred quid. A lot of money. Um so, at the end of the day, you need to try and maintain your facets. And a guide can be useful, but I think these things are a faff. That's my my well, is it opinion. No, I just think it's fact, actually. It's just fact. They're a faff, all right? That's what they are. An absolute faff. It's overcomplicating something that is simple. I understand having a simple uh, guide. To support the actual drill bit at a certain angle but it, it could be a piece of angle line like a v it sits in like a, you know cut bits of wood glued together and you just twist it in that and it'll do all sorts of sizes and it just gently plays up against the actual side of the actual uh bench grinder grinding wheel and touch it up a few times and rotate it the other side dunk it some water and carry on you don't need all this crap that is expensive at all mick ain't cheap no oh, i'm sure that, yeah, but that, that, yeah, there you go look. 469 euros is reduced from 596 at the moment i ain't gonna be doing that no i suggest you don't do you yeah, know don't do it either now torment's are great things if you uh you can sharpen your chisels up on them stuff like that but yeah again it's hollow ground again anything that has a round wheel will grind a hollow grind on your chisels and your plain irons and stuff like that if that's what you want well that's fair enough that's up to you but that ain't for me no my opinion i know i know i know and from my experience over the years so anyway would you be most kind and i'll boot the older uh, like button and uh, maybe subscribe to the channel and the little bell icon because then you get one fuzzy thing in your pocket every time i upload another video and also if you want the support the channel you can do it on patreon or buy us a coffee and the links are down below. That allows me to buy bits and pieces for the channel so I can make more videos, you know? Especially the amount of videos I'm putting up. Yeah, it's, you know, I need constant ideas. I do. Constant ideas. If you've got any of them as well, it'd be much appreciated. Any questions, leave it in the comments down below because I do actually read the comments, but you probably already know. Well, it's time for me to go and say toodaloo, you know? So, toodaloo? Not, not toodaloo. No, I'm okay. I've just been.